Together with my colleague, Madeline Shoren, we're gonna guide you through three quick technology demonstrations of exciting new technology running in the cloud and on the edge, enabling field operations connected or disconnected. First up is a complete end-to-end -end cloud SaaS solution using SiteScan for ArcGIS to plan drone flights, improve drone operation workflows, and streamline image processing. Thanks, James. We'll start our journey in Southern California, where the San Bernardino Airport is developing rapidly. Using Esri's way back imagery, we can see changes over the last few years, from 2014 to 2017 and 2019. This year, the airport has begun construction for a new air cargo facility. And to keep stakeholders informed, it's critical to capture construction progress over the entire area of interest in near real time. With SiteScan for ArcGIS, we can track this progress. Out in the field at the San Bernardino Airport, we have a drone, the controller, and an iPad. The first step is to develop the flight plan on the iPad. Selecting the flight plans widget and choosing area survey, SiteScan for ArcGIS connects directly to ArcGIS Online, where we can access web maps and layers for reference. And now, we're ready to craft the plan. Very simply, I drag the vertices of the plan over the area of interest. The flight path is automatically generated, and the taskbar at the bottom of the screen updates dynamically. If we fly at 200 feet, the flight will take about 108 minutes at 0.7 inch pixel resolution and require about five batteries. SiteScan for ArcGIS allows the pilot to interactively explore different flight options. For example, setting the flight altitude to 400 feet, the flight time is cut in half, pixel resolution remains high, and battery needs are dramatically reduced. This flight will capture 371 images to be processed later. If we were really in the field at the airport, we would have the drone go through its pre-flight checklist, and then it would follow the, the flight path as specified, capturing images along the way. Once the drone returns, the next step is to process the imagery in the cloud. Opening the SiteScan Manager in the web browser will add the captured photos to an existing project for the airport. Very simply, to begin processing, we drag and drop photos from the drone's SD card directly into the uploader. The images will begin processing automatically and can be shared to our ArcGIS online organization, harnessing the power of the cloud. Let's fast forward and look at processed results from a flight last month. Turning on the ortho mosaic and zooming in just west of the construction site is the San Bernardino Emergency Training Facility, where trainees are exposed to live fire conditions across various aircraft types. Here, we can even see fire hoses laid out and ready for use in an exercise with this plane and helicopter. Flying over to the construction site, we can see activity removing an unneeded part of the runway, or taxiway. SiteScan also produced 3D information, including a digital terrain model and digital surface model. Let's bring this data into a web scene and use measurement tools to analyze it. Flying back down to the construction site, we'll use a before and after digital terrain model to measure volume change over the most recent construction area. Dropping in a quick polygon, the construction progress is calculated. About 20,000 cubic meters have been graded. This completes our drone workflow for today, all using the power of the cloud. For many of you here, processing your imagery in the cloud meets the bulk of your needs. Coming from a military background, however, I know that there's also a lot of you who need to disconnect that processing power from the cloud and deploy it to the field. Set another way, to the edge. For part two, we're going to use ArcGIS Enterprise running on a Microsoft Azure Stack Edge appliance to advance our workflow by integrating ArcGIS Excalibur, an enterprise web application, to exploit our imagery on our local server. Also at the San Bernardino Airport is the Unical MRO, where planes are disassembled and recycled in accordance to end-of-life procedures. 
Here we can see airplanes in various states of deconstruction. ArcGIS Excalibur provides a streamlined way to explore and capture structured observations over areas like this. Turning on the aircraft layer, these observations in the northern part of the facility have already been captured. Here, we see a 777 that's not ready for flight. Let's capture structured observations of our own in the southern part of the facility. When we explore the image metadata, the corresponding image footprint is highlighted in map space. In addition to this orthomosaic, we can also add in oblique imagery, getting a different perspective of the plane. Zooming in, the double-decker windows indicate that this is a 747. Selecting the jet airplane template and dropping a point on the map will make a note in the observation. The template also prompts for the state of readiness of the plane, but with no cockpit window and what looks like two missing engines, it's clear that this plane is not ready to fly. While we capture these observ observations, ArcGIS Excalibur is working in the back end to automatically collect information like the image name, project ID, and observation collection time, increasing efficiency. We'll go ahead and submit this observation. But there's something interesting in the ortho mosaic. There's a small plane kind of hiding between or under two big 747s. Pulling up a different oblique image, I have a hunch that this is a 737, but I want to know what series it is. We'll use measurement tools that are built into Excalibur to capture the length of the plane. Maybe that'll give us a clue. About 31 meters, which means that this is the 737-500 series. With this information, we could create a new observation. Both during collection and after, the observations are feeding into this operations dashboard, all hosted in the same edge computing environment. This is enterprise at the edge, providing the tools and power to process, share, and analyze your data in the field. By bringing our processing power to where our newly collected imagery resides, we've harnessed edge computing to process our imagery more quickly. This works great, and we can enhance our workflow by adding in another component. For part three, let's push things a little further by integrating an edge mobile device with machine learning capabilities that can leverage the best of both worlds, our cloud-based SaaS solution and edge computing environment. We'll start in the field using Survey123 to capture and share data using my phone. For example, let's say that we want to capture this stop sign while I'm out conducting a survey. A typical workflow would be to take a picture of the object and then look through a long list of object types to make sure that I'm selecting the, light, the right one. There we go. Depending on the object type, we can add in additional attributes, such as height and condition. But we can start to streamline this entire process using machine learning algorithms on the edge or on an edge device, in this case, on my phone. Today, we're excited to share one of Esri's research and development projects that's integrating machine, uh, machine learning and TensorFlow into Survey123 for object det detection. Let's do the same workflow, but this time using a machine learning assisted survey. You can see the algorithm working to identify the object as the camera is pulled up. Snapping a photo, you can see that the object type has been pre-selected for me, eliminating the need to go through that long pick list of items. This was a really simple example, but we can, what if we took this to scale? And instead of just capturing stop signs, we also captured the number of people gathered in a public place. Last week, I went to Laguna Beach in Southern California and took the survey with me to patrol the boardwalk. My goal was to capture the number of people, identifying a pattern of life for a bright, sunny Saturday at the beach, all using the survey's added-in machine learning capabilities, which are running on the phone itself in a completely disconnected environment. 
The workflow is simple. I'd pull up the survey at an area of interest and capture a photo, which is in turn capturing the number of people in the area. I'd save the results locally, and after a few hours on patrol, the phone is connected back online, where it's shared to my organization's portal. That data layer is feeding into an operations dashboard, where a distinct pattern of life begins to emerge on the fly. Here, we can see concentrations of people clustered around a local gelato shop and playing volleyball on the beach. Using machine learning at the edge, a distinct pattern of life was identified for a sunny Saturday in Southern California. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline, for that glorious look at our technology in the cloud and on the edge.